Hello and welcome to the Headache Doctor Podcast. I'm Dr. Taves, your host, and as always, it's our mission on this podcast to educate and empower everyone with headaches and migraines so that you can break free from a life of fear of your next headache or migraine and dependence on medication. In today's podcast, we're gonna talk about the five reasons why virtual care and self-management, primarily self-management, can work for you. This truly should be an empowering podcast for you all. We're gonna talk about these five reasons. We're gonna go through them. And I'm excited about this, partially because the journey of Novera Headache Center, this podcast, what we've been doing in the world of headaches and migraines, it had to go virtual after COVID. Parts of it had to go virtual. We didn't actually ever shut down, but we had to go virtual to uh, accommodate to the changes that were happening. And what we found was that people that were struggling with headaches and migraines uh, that would find us through our website and maybe we're out of state or even in, in Colorado but uh, chose to work with us virtually, we could still have a profound impact on their life. And so I'm gonna talk about the five reasons why self-management, meaning if you never go see a provider, if you never actually come in to see us here at Novera and we can never actually get our hands uh, on your neck and do the and apply these techniques that we've applied on so many patients that's worked well. I'm going to talk about why you can still control your situation and it can actually be a very very impactful uh, process that you go through as far as self management. Okay, so first off, here's the I don't know if it's the number one, but here's number one. So every moment of your life, and this this is just a big overarching thought. Every moment of your life can either be helpful or I, I, it's still, it's still work in progress here, but helpful or harmful. I'm going to tweak that word harmful to say it can either be, we can either say it's either beneficial or it's adding to the level of tension. We're either doing things that are therapeutic for us or we're increasing stress. Okay. So going through life, think of any activity, whether it's sitting or jogging, whether it's Um, working on your computer and replying to someone with emails, whether it's watching a movie on the couch, whether it's sitting and playing a game uh, with your kiddos, whatever it is, it can either be therapeutic or it can add to the stress and tension of your neck, of your shoulders, of your jaw. All right. So one of the things that I'm going to assume as we talk about this process, and I I feel like this is a safe assumption because almost everyone we see it with headaches and migraines is having some sort of underlying neck, shoulder, jaw tension issue, okay? And for most of those people, that is actually driving uh, the the bulk of their symptoms. So head or facial pain, we're gonna assume there's some sort of jaw, neck, or shoulder problem. Now, of course, there's all these other things that go into it, but we're gonna assume that, that you controlling that is going to have an impact on your life. And so saying that every moment of your life can either be beneficial or increase the amount of tension and stress is, I'm going to assume it's true for you. Even if you've never worked with us, if you have headaches or migraines and you've never reached out, we've never heard your story, I'm going to assume it's true for you. All right, so what does that mean? How, how is that helpful in your situation? Well, one, it means that it doesn't take major changes in your life to potentially put time on your side again. So it doesn't take major changes to put time on your side. To to have those activities be beneficial, it doesn't mean that you need to stop everything you're doing and go in this take a 180 and go in this opposite direction. Okay? We we're not asking people to make these drastic drastic changes in their life. So take for example I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint a picture of maybe the average desk job worker, you're a parent, you get up, you have your, your morning routine, maybe you get up before your kids, um, you read, you do your devotions, you do whatever you do in the morning, you have your quiet time, and then you get your kids ready. Maybe they're school age, so you're getting ready for school. Maybe you don't have that time in the morning, uh, which is something that we can tweak, but you're, you're off, you're running, you're, you're getting your kids ready, you got their lunch, you're, you're getting them to school, okay? Then you go to work. And at work, you're sitting down, you have a desk job, and, uh, and you're looking at a computer, okay? And then you get home from work, and you're exhausted, you're emotionally just drained, work took it out of you, and you, you have your dinner, maybe you uh, have a few, um, I, I like to have 
something a little sweet after dinner, and uh, maybe, but maybe the stress got to you enough where you're having uh, some snacks, maybe some things that you weren't, shouldn't really have as far as you're inputting things in your body uh, in regards to diet that maybe your body doesn't like as much. And then, and then you're relaxing on the couch. You, um, because of all the the work stress and the emotions of it, you just want to relax. And so you hit the couch. Um, you, this is your time to unwind and just decompress so that you can do it again tomorrow. All right, so let's break that down. First off, the waking up in the morning. So are you waking up with a headache? Is this, uh, are you feeling good when you start your day? Those are questions that will determine what your initial activity should be. And if you can incorporate something therapeutic for your body, maybe three to five minutes in the morning, that can really change the trajectory of your day. But that's not hard to do. It's something that can be very simple. So after that, you're running to get your kids out the door, you're uh, packing their lunches, you're in the car, you're driving before work, and then you get to work. Okay, so what does work look like? Work is, for most people, sitting down, whether in a cubicle, uh, you have your desk, you have your your monitor, maybe uh, someone at your work has instructed you on proper ergonomics, and so your screen's at a good level, you have a good chair, But the problem is that you're sitting, and so we need to get you standing. We need to get you potentially a standing desk. We need to get you taking breaks. We need to get you walking. So it doesn't mean that you have to change the the fact that you have a desk job and you work on a computer. It just means you need to implement um, these these little habits of standing, walking, all that stuff. And then when you get home, your, your, your diet and potentially incorporating a specific type of exercise, meaning whether that's cardio or strength training, is important. But in addition to that, it's how you end your day that gets a lot of people in trouble. So are you ending your day uh, relaxing on the couch in a way that your neck is actually increasing stress? We assume that sitting and relaxing is actually helpful and therapeutic for a body, but oftentimes it puts our neck in these weird positions and we don't notice it at the time, but the tension increases. And so all throughout your day, the time was kind of working against you, but little tweaks can make it be actually helpful. So going from an increased stress, increased tension situation over and over again in all those different scenarios to uh, changing those scenarios, you still did everything, uh, but they were just a little bit more helpful. Now that's just a general overview. When we talk to people, and uh, go through our health coaching process. We wanna get into the specifics and we wanna hold you accountability, uh, accountable to those things. Um, meaning, all the little nuances of your day, we want you to think about uh, if this is helpful, if it's beneficial, or if it's adding stress to your neck, and we wanna help you understand that. Because oftentimes people don't understand what's actually helpful or harmful. Uh, our, our head weighs 10 to 12 pounds, gravity, stress, all that. So your neck is um, tasked with holding up this bowling ball weight throughout the day, and so, uh, understanding that changing the way you think is is one of the first steps. So number two, understanding your symptoms can be freeing and, and powerful. I've worked with people that uh, just getting them to see their symptoms through this lens of my neck is tight, my jaw is tight, my shoulders are tight, and, and all of this tension and these restrictions need to be resolved to a certain extent uh, before I'm going to feel better. That light bulb moment, that aha moment for people is extremely powerful. And I would say that's probably one of the biggest things for you listeners in this podcast. We get feedback quite a bit. And uh, one of the the most beneficial things people get is just this validation that uh, let's say your neck can be the problem. A lot of people intuitively know their neck is an issue. They have pain in their neck. It wraps up around their head. However your head or facial pain presents, a lot of people realize that their neck is a problem. And so having that be validated and, and understanding why your neck can be a problem and understanding movement, how important movement is for your neck can be a very enlightening thing. And so that changing the shift in mindset can be really powerful. If I'm gonna paint a picture of the healthcare system currently and how mindset can be against us, if you go to your primary care doctor after you get uh, a migraine, they and you tell them you, the list of your symptoms, a one-sided throbbing, pounding sensation, uh, you have nausea, maybe you have a light sensitivity, uh, you'll get categorized in the migraine um, in the migraine diagnosis category. Now, what does that mean? Uh, since they can't really explain what's happening, they don't know the why behind it, people don't necessarily receive that diagnosis and think like, okay, good, they. 
I'm in good hands and they know what's best for me. And I know that I know exactly what's going on. No, no one ever says that. And if you feel that with your migraine diagnosis, um, then I, yeah, I guess reach out to us and let us know. And, and I want to understand uh, your process, but most of the people we work with are not, they don't have these like comfort feelings um, just because the why behind it isn't well understood. And even if you have and a lot of different types of headache patterns and presentations are out there, and oftentimes primary care doctors or even neurologists don't know how to properly categorize those, but even the categorizing doesn't explain the why. And so people often have this fear of what is going on in my head? Why Why does my brain feel like it's being squeezed? Or my why is my temple throbbing? Or why do I have a stabbing sensation in the side of my head? And it's a really scary experience. And that anxiety can be really debilitating for people. So without ever seeing us and having us do our hands-on treatment, just uh, having that acknowledgement and understanding of, of your problem can be really enlightening. So that's number two. Number three, our bodies have an incredible com- capacity to compensate and heal itself. So again, we're talking about why self-management can be beneficial. So our bodies are, they're, they're amazing. We were created to move and um, when we don't move, when we have injuries, when we have stress that builds up over time, our bodies do a great job at compensating. Our bodies also do a great job of healing themselves. So again, if we think of our current uh, model of healthcare, intervention is assumed to be needed in almost every situation. I mean, take, take a scenario where you're seeing um, your primary care doctor and or you're working with the healthcare system in whatever way, um, it's assumed that you need to you need some sort of intervention. Uh, the the edu- education provided on how the body can heal itself, um, whether it's the immune system when fighting a, a virus, uh, to the uh, the way we're physically made to handle certain stresses on the body, uh, on either end of the spectrum. So on one end could be you have a herniated disc, so you're going to be in pain the rest of your life until this herniated disc is fixed. Uh, that would be a problem um, because that is generally wrong and that's not advised to talk that way, but it's very common for people, providers to, to communicate in that way um, to, you know, thinking that um, some sort of viral infection, just your, your body's totally helpless. Like the immune system has no role. Your immune system is, is worthless or maybe we, we don't even provide education on what the immune system is. So people think they need to intervene, intervene, intervene. Now, obviously, there's there's a lot there there's um, there's a I guess a paradigm shift. There's a spectrum there of you know the extreme is you let the body do everything, and the opposite extreme is. Um, the, the body is sort of not able to protect, it, protect itself at all, and uh, we need to intervene. Now, I think we've swung, the pendulum swung in the direction of the body's not able to protect itself at all, and uh, intervention is always needed. But what we've found over the years as we've helped people with self-management is they can do a lot for themselves, and the body is actually very good at, one, compensating, but two, finding its way out of these situations. And so... We in person with our care, I believe we love what we do because we're actually restoring normal function to the body. We're not slapping a Band-Aid on something or changing a separate system so that it's masking your pain. We're actually addressing the underlying problem, which I love. So don't hear me that our in-person intervention um, is not is not necessarily needed uh, or there's, there's no additional value or impact there, because there definitely is, but it's important to understand that the body, when in the right environment, uh, can heal itself, and it's it's intended to do that. It's created to do that. So, your your mindset in that is important because if if you think of your body as just vulnerable and you need someone to um, to treat you in this situation, you need that medication, you need that MRI, you need that CT CT scan, you need that next thing that's going to Um, sort of help your body get through this. Now, your specific situation might might be hard to speak to, but in general, most people are able to self-manage as long as there's this, 
this shift in understanding that says my, my body is able to heal itself and I can control the environment that my body's in so that it's able to heal itself in this way. All right, number four is you already already intuitively know what your body likes or doesn't like. So in our process of self-management, educating people through this, one of the things that, and even in person care, one of the things that we have seen over and over again is that people intuitively know what their bodies need. And and ultimately, that intuition of what their bodies need, I, I've yet to communicate with someone where their intuition said, I need this med. Because you're, what you're intuitively thinking about is what's actually causing this problem. Where's the pain coming from? And uh, generally, people don't intuitively think, well, I, I just need a medication. That's ultimately, if we get to the bottom of this, it's going to lead to medication. Most people don't think that. Most people think that they're evaluating their situation as they go about their day, and they're noticing things uh, in their day, whether it's tension that's building up their neck and their shoulders and their jaw. I bring that up as an example because that's one of the most common things that people say is they just they intuitively think this is this is my neck. They're just not being validated in that. No one's giving them permission to fully think that because migraines are this neurological disorder that has nothing to do with your neck. All right. So because you already intuitively know that your body likes or dislikes something, um, you have if someone gives you permission like us, if we give you permission like on this podcast or working with us virtually to lean into those things and actually believe that those things will get you better, the changes that those changes that you make without us even telling you, you just intuitively know, um, maybe I should change this about my day, that can really be very impactful as well. So one of the things that um, I believe is possible, and again, this is a podcast that's going out into the world, I don't know who's listening to this. I don't know who you individually are, but I think I could ask a series of questions and you, um, so I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm just going to ask you questions and you intuitively, I think, will kind of be directed in in how you answer those questions because your body kind of knows what's good and what's not. Okay, so here's uh, a few questions. Do you notice an increase in tension with the workday, working at a computer, sitting, etc.? Okay, if I just ask you that question, how would you answer it? How might you respond? Um, When you wake up, do you have headaches? Do you think you could reduce stress on the neck at night? Another question might be, what type of movement or exercise routine do you have? Do you think exercise would be helpful or harmful in your situation? Uh, Last question might be, what might you be doing during your day that is adding stress to your neck? Okay, so Now I've got you thinking about your day. I've got you thinking about when you wake up if you have headaches. Well, have you ever thought about your sleeping position being a problem? What type of of movement or exercise routine do you have? And do you think the body would benefit from that? Or are you convinced that exercise uh, is harmful in your situation? Um, Are you seeing an increase in stress in your workday? And what might be able to change in your workday? just by asking those questions, which I don't think providers do very often, and and knowing that oftentimes people will answer in a way, so let's take for example, is the tension increases increasing during your workday? Most people, especially with tension headaches, afternoon headaches that, or evening headaches, they would say, yes, I do believe the tension is increasing during my day. So this is what I'm talking about. Intuitively is the thought, well, that means that I need medication. Medication is the thing missing from my life. No, that's not where people go. People should go to, well, what do I need to change in my day and how do I keep from that stress building up? The problem is that headache and migraine patients are never offered that as they go through our healthcare system. One, because questions like this are never asked. And questions like this being asked and then giving a patient uh, permission to then think about and make those changes in their life can be done virtually. It actually is probably being done right now on this podcast. And so, and that can actually have, I've seen it have greater impact than any medication out there. And so it's amazing because this is such a low hanging fruit and it's so easy to do, but it's almost as if people don't believe that can really impact their life. All right, number five, the the reason I believe that self-management can work for you 
and can be incredibly impactful is because we have seen it work. In-person and virtual care through our practice has the, the self-management home care part of our practice has grown and we've seen it become vitally important, integral to someone's success as we, as we take them through our process. We've worked with a lot of people who have not actually come out to see us and through a process of asking them questions like we just did, getting to know their story, understanding their day to day, keeping them accountable to those changes because uh, we as humans um, are not easy to change and adapt and put new things into our lifestyle or change the way we were doing things. So that accountability is a huge part. But through that process, which sounds very simple and very basic, um, but the whole point of this podcast is to um, communicate to you just the power of that. There, there's a huge impact that can be had. I've had people, um, one of the patients that stands out in my mind was a lady actually in Europe and she reached out to us and uh, we just, like I just said, we went through uh, a very basic process of just asking her about her day, understanding her symptoms, um, and then it was sort of empowering her to make some simple changes in her life and she found more relief than she'd ever had. She went to specialist after specialist traveling um, around the country. Um, she went to different places in Europe, had not found any relief, was taking all these medications. And uh, within weeks, she was profoundly better. So now what do you do with that? What do you do with this information? One, if you're listening to this podcast, I do think uh, just making these changes, thinking about those five reasons self-management can be helpful. I want you to feel motivated to start making some changes in your life. Now, this podcast um, may not be enough to have those dramatic improvements that you're looking for. Now, of course, we're a business, and uh, so we, but we are so passionate about what we do that we want you to work with us. Um, we are doing things that are very, very hard to find around the country. I'm unaware of anyone that's offering uh, this virtual product as we are, but I'm gonna talk about um, what we have coming up is a free live webinar. So on February 9th at 12 p.m., I will be leading this webinar and uh, the value add here is a, is a few things. One is you can actually ask me questions. So if you're wondering in your specific situation how, um, how XYZ would make sense or what self-management would look like or hey, I've always wanted to ask this and you've never addressed it, um, then show up to that webinar and ask that question and we can have a conversation because I'm sure there's other people that have that issue who would benefit from hearing an answer. It's called the Headache and Migraine Three-Step Plan webinar. You will learn um, how to better self-manage your pain. Uh, I want you to have confidence and you understand what your next step is. Uh, and then I want you to start taking back control of your life. The other thing that we're gonna offer on that webinar is exclusive promotion, a deal to work with us and our health coach going through the master class, and then also um, receiving, which I haven't talked about this much on the podcast, but receiving what's called our SAM, uh, SAM device. So this is on our website. If you look on our website, we actually have a device that's targeting uh, some of the most overlooked areas of treatment when it comes to headaches and migraines and it's focusing on the upper part of the neck which is such a high real estate area when it comes to headaches and migraines and restoring function mobility i can uh, we can talk more about that uh, on the webinar and um, what we want to do is get that in people's hands along with the course um, in addition to um, working with our health coaching for that accountability. But the webinar itself will have an additional, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this three-step plan. We'll make sure you guys understand it. Um, you'll leave feeling like the webinar itself uh, was, was valuable for you. I'll make sure of that. Uh, but I also want it to be an environment where you can ask questions. So how do you sign up for that? There's a, there'll be a link in the show notes or you can, um, on any of our social media pages, you can uh, click in our bio and you can sign up for that and we will send you um, the, the link to log into that event and I hope to see you guys there. Thank you so much for listening to the Headache Doctor podcast. As always, it's our mission to educate and empower everyone with headaches and migraines so you can break free from a life of fear of your next headache or migraine and dependence on medication, allowing you to thrive in everything you do. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.